Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this lesson, I would like to talk about how the authorization concept looks like in the performer suite. The access to the performer suite is done by named users. Their permissions are controlled by roles. A role can be assigned to a user, so we have a one-to-one -one relationship. For the user, several parameters and settings can be defined, such as a username and password, and also the access to systems and scenarios. The number of users is defined via the license, and at the same time, there is an admin user, a predefined admin user, that is created during the installation process. You cannot delete this admin user, and the admin role is assigned to this user, so he or she can access all areas of the performer suite. The role can therefore define which administrative areas, functions, products and object types the user can access. We deliver several predefined default roles which you can use. We'll take a look at all of these authorization related settings in the tool in a moment and by the end of this lesson we'll be able to answer the following questions. What does the authorization architecture in the performer suite look like? How do I create users? How do I create roles and what permissions exist? And last but not least, what other authorization relevant settings exist? Okay, so let's have a look at the user management in the tool. Therefore, I will open the Performer Suite and you can find the user management in the administration ribbon and then you have to click on Users and Roles. In the User Management area, you can find three tabs, Users, Roles and Settings. So let's start with the User tab. Here you can get an overview of the existing users, their status, and the available licensed users here on the right side. In addition, locked in users can be locked out via this button and also deactivated. So you can deactivate users if you click here on lock user. Deactivated users are not counted as licensed users. You can also delete existing users if you click on this button, the toolbar, delete user, or if you right click on the user and click on delete user here, then the user is deleted and he or she cannot do a login with this user. Here you can also see the admin user. As I mentioned before, you cannot delete the, the um, admin user. And um, please keep in mind that the default admin user should be actively used in your daily work, as this user is counted as one of the licensed users. All right, so let's create a new user. So I will click on this button here, Add User. And as you can see, the following window opens where I can maintain the user information. So let's go through all the points. First, you can select whether you want to create an application user or an SAP user. So the application user can switch within the performer suite between all licensed SAP system and connectors. Alternatively, an SAP BW, HANA, BO, SSC user can be used for the login. I will discuss the special option in more detail at the end of the live demo. Um, next, you can select the role, and I will also talk about this in a couple of minutes. And then you can specify some user parameters. So the user ID, the password, Um, an email address and optionally you can also add uh, your full name and your department to the user. The authorizations regarding the use of additional tools like the Migration Boost and Translation Steward can be selected here. Okay, so on the right side you see um, the licensed systems, so you see the licensed BW systems and you can assign the systems to the user so that the user is able to, lock it, to do a login to the system and to work also with all the objects in the system. So you can um, click on each connector tab if the connector is licensed and then you can select, for example, that this user should also be able to access the BO system but also all HANA systems. 
Here you can also specify which scenario folders the user should have access to. Okay, so I will save this. And if the user do a login, let's do this. So I will now do a login with this newly created user. So it's an application user. So I will add test because this is the name of the user. I will insert the password. I will do a login. Here I can decide if I want to share my usage data. And then the login was, was um, successful. Here I can adjust my user information. So if I click on this, I can, for example, change some user um, details. So for perhaps it's the department two, or I had an error in my email, something like this. And I can also enable the usage, usage data and errors. So what we saw at the beginning or skip the product selection window. If everything is fine, I can click on save and then the changes were saved. Um, I can also enter those settings if I double click here on my user. So if I click on this on my user Alex, then I can also open this personal user settings window. Okay, we now know how to create users, but what to consider when creating roles? Well, let's take a look at that next. In the performer suite, various predefined roles can be found here in the top roles. So you see the default SAC, BO, BW, HAN, and also Datasphere user roles. You can also see the full administrator. So this role was um, is assigned to the admin user. You can also see the scenario administrator, technical administrator, and the user role. Except for the administrator roles, the roles can all be edited, but not deleted. So I can not delete this role, but I can edit the role. So if I do a double click, you see this window. And here you can precisely set which areas the user should see and not see. So in the first tab, um, you can define which activities that can be found in the administration ribbon the user is authorized to see. So is the user um, allowed to access the user management and to, to do all the things we saw here in this tutorial? Um, should the user be allowed to adjust the connection data, to execute the synchronization, to change the license and so on? So all of this can find here. Um, you can also decide um, some scenario related topics um, like as you can see here. So user can maintain scenario folders, user can create scenarios and so on. In the row we can define per connector which object types the user is allowed to see. So if I click on business warehouse I could say for example that the user shouldn't be allowed to see tables and views. So then this user to which this role is assigned won't see the tables in the entity grid. And you can do this for all the connectors here in this tab. So for SAC systems, for HANA, also for Datasphere and so on. And for each connector, you can also decide if the user should be able to access the BW connector or BO HANA SAC connector. And if he or she can create documentations, create comments and add comments to objects and run analyses. So all of these can be set up in the roles. Okay, so the roles can also be created if you click on this button. So you can also create a newly a new role if those default roles are not enough for you and if you need more roles. All right, so let's now talk about the SAP log in I mentioned during the user presentation. So in the settings tab, I can define if it should be possible to log in to the performer suite with the SAP BW, BO or HANA user. So the performer suite tries to log on to the selected system with the SAP credentials and if it is possible then you can enter the performer suite with this user and you are automatically logged on to the selected SAP system. Okay, so let's try this out. So I will open a new performer suite instance and I will activate the setting once again. So we can see here we have three users right now. And now I will do a login with my BW for HANA user. It's the A4H system. I will insert my user, Akon Mock, and also my password. And as you can see, SSO is also possible. 
um, you just have to provide to us the um, SNC parameter and then we can insert this into your license and then you can do an SSO login. So I will do this classic login and I will click on login here and as I mentioned now this login to the SAP system is done and was successful so I'm able to do the login with my SAP user. And as you can see, if I do a refresh, in this instance, this new user Acomoc was created in the background. It's a um, user with the role default as a PBW user, and this user has only access to the A4H system, so the selected system where I did the login. So let's check this in the log in the new instance. So I have to create a new name. It's my Acon Mock BW user, something like this, and I will just save this. And this is now the instance where I did a log in with my SAP user. And as you can see, as I mentioned, I can only I'm already logged on to the BW system, to the A4H system, and I have only the possibility to work in my A4H system. If you want to change this, then the admin has to add more systems to the user. Okay, so we recommend you to create application users. Why do we recommend this? Well, if I log on to this A4H system, as you saw, then I have only access to the A4H system. So if you have licensed more than one connector, it makes sense to create application users in order to realize the cross-system potential of the performer suite. All right, so let's jump back to the presentation and on this slide you can see one example of user of a user and role organization so we recommend you that the default admin um, takes care of the technical configuration and does activities like user management um, setting up the software updating the software and the synchronization the a functional administrator can create templates and also project documentation. So he or she should upload word, word templates, create global common templates and so on. And then we have the standard user. So the standard user, you should assign the user role to this kind of user and this user should be able to create documentations and perform analyses and so on. So of course this approach only makes sense if at least five users are licensed. If the number of users is low, it makes sense to merge the function administrator and the standard user, for example. Okay, so let's sum up what we saw. The performer suite is accessed by application users or SAP users. Each user has a role that controls what activities he or she is allowed to perform in the tool. Initially, an admin user and several default roles are pre-delivered. Based on your user account, think about how you distribute responsibility by assigning roles. All right, thanks for your attention. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.